God's true model is for pastors, elders in every church, and not a one-man pastor show. Now, the vast majority of churches out there today, they're not patterned after the Word of God. And I'm even referring to, never mind all the different so-called Christian denominations. And obviously, Jesus Christ did not build any denomination. Jesus Christ said, you know, I will build my church. You know, any church that takes uh, the name of a man, like, you know, Calvinist churches, Lutheran churches, you know, even Baptist churches, names are not of God. Denominations are not of God. You know, starting a church and having churches that are following the teachings of a man is not of God. Now, within, again, within these different so-called Christian denominations, one of the things they have in common is that you see that they are they have a one man pastor they have a system where one man is on the top and everyone else is to like you know follow along one man on the top and that's not of god what is what god would have is 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 to have a multiplicity of pastors and elders in every church now I want to show you different scriptures that prove this. I want to show you that, indeed, Jesus' model is that his churches would have pastors and elders in every church. Now, again, what I want to emphasize is that, like I did in the previous Bible study, you don't need a pastor and elder to be deemed a real church. And that's a false teaching out there. You don't need a pastor and elder to be a real church. That is another tradition of man. What you do need to be is at least two or three born again, saved, children of God, baptized, and one of them has to be a man so he can do the preaching in the church, the teaching in the church, to covenant together to carry out the great, their part in the Great Commission as they are filled by the Holy Spirit. This is, this is a church. You don't need a pastor. That is not in the Bible. So, in a book of Acts, let's go into chapter 14, verses 19 to 23. And the Bible says, And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium, who persuaded the people... And having stoned Paul, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit, as the disciples stood round about him, he rose up and came into the city. And the next day he departed with Barnabas to Derbe. And when they had preached the gospel to that city, and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra, and to Iconium, and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples, and exhorting them to continue in the faith, and that we must, through much tribulation, enter into the kingdom of God. And here's the key. So now we know that, that Paul and Barnabas went to Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch, three cities. And what did he do in verse 23? And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commanded them to the Lord on whom they believed. Here is a clear scripture that Jesus Christ through Paul and Barnabas, ordained, selected, elders in every church. We see that Jesus Christ, His model, His design, His pattern from every church is that they would have, uh, is they would have elders in every church, a plurality of elders, not a one man, pastor. So that is, that is one clear scripture. So we, have, we see here in Lystra, Iconium, and Antioch that each of these churches in these three cities, they had multiple elders. They had elders in the plural. They didn't have, a, they didn't have one pastor. They didn't have one elder. They had elders in every church. Now, you know, I'm, I hope to God people have read the New Testament through once and have come across this verse. And, you know, doesn't it make it... Okay, wait a minute. There's elders in every church. You know, why does my church only have one elder, one pastor? Is there, like, really not another qualified elder and pastor to be, in, to be um, 
selected to be ordained in my church, like, why is it we always pretty much see uh, one elder? And it doesn't matter if it's a church of of 50, 100, 150, 200. Yeah, that's, that's like, even though there's like, you know, a lot of people, to, you know, 50, to me, 50 is a pretty good sized church. Especially if it's a church uh, that is uh, preaching, you know, for us English speakers, King James Bible, salvation by, 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 uh, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and all should be saved. You know, where it's just putting all your faith in the death, the burial, the resurrection of Christ and thou should be saved and, and you get eternal life, you know. And this is a promise he hath promised us even eternal life. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believeth on me hath everlasting life. So, you know, and that churches actually go out and preach this message and do thorough soul winning where they'll spend 10 minutes, they'll spend 15 minutes, they'll spend 20 minutes, you know, where, where Christians are spending as, as long as it is needed for that soul that they're preaching the gospel to, to understand it and to hopefully to, to, to call upon the name of the Lord to be saved. And not to do this, which has been what I have seen in my experience in these in, in independent fundamental Baptist churches in the past, is that when I went out with the assistant pastor, when I, who, when I, who should have been actually an elder or another pastor in church, and there's no such thing as an assistant pastor, right? There's these past, all pastors be, to be equal. Not to have a senior pastor, but I'll get into that later. But what I saw from, from the leaders and from the, from the deacon and others in the past, and what I've heard too is that we, they're doing one, two, three, repeat this after me. There's no emphasis on eternal security of the believer. There's no emphasis on believe, 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 believe. Believe on the Lord and thou shalt be saved, right? It's, it, it, churches, pastors, elders... And, and, and these churches that I, that I was in and what, I, what I'm hearing in general from, from talking and, and communicating with other people, is that, is that it's like we don't even know how to preach the gospel clearly anymore. But, you know, I ran off on a tangent there. But, uh, and I'll, good night, I forgot why, why I even went on that tangent. But um, there, there's, there, there is a need to go back to what the Bible says. And I'm trying to tie this back to, to the verse 23. So, so therefore, you know, when you're when you're in a church and, you, and you're seeing this one man pastor, even though you look around you and you see, you know, that that guy, that guy, that that man, you know, he, I think he, he meets the qualifications for a pastor. So you know, we have to go back to having elders in every church. That's the biblical motto. Back to the Bible, less me. To Titus, my own son, after the common faith, grace, mercy, and peace from God the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ our Savior. For this cause left I thee in Crete, that, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, and ordain elders in every city as I appointed thee. So again, we have here, we have here Paul um, exhorting Titus. And reminding him of, of, of the reason why he left him in Crete. And that was to, you know, two, twofold, to set in order, uh, that thou shouldest set in order the things that are wanting, comma, and ordain elders in every city. So again, every city, God's will is that there would be a, there would be a church in every city. And I don't think these, uh, in Crete, it's, you know, it's a small island. And what is Paul commanding, exhorting, reminding Titus of, of what he wants him to do when Titus gets into Crete? He wants Titus to ordain or select elders in every city, or if you may, elders in every church. So, again, we have here Paul through the inspiration of the Holy Ghost, uh, knowing what God's will, knowing what Jesus Christ's will is for churches, is that there would be a multiplicity of elders in every church, in every city. So why, why do we see this not happening in our church today? Why do we have a one-man system where, so far, I have shown you two examples in the Bible where we're having uh, more than one elder being ordained in, in, every ch in every church, in every city. You know, we've fallen off following what the Bible says. And you know what? This is not the only part or place 
uh, within church doctrine that we've fallen off the wagon, if you may, where we've left the design of, of, of what Jesus Christ has ordained in the New Testament for churches today, for New Testament churches. Moving on, another really good scripture is James 5.14, where it says, Is any sick among you, elders of the church, and let them pray over him, anointing him with the oil in the name of the Lord? And I want to focus on where it says, you know, let him call, so let the sick among them, call for the elders of the church. Again, we have, we have plurality of elders in this church. We have elders, we have pastors in this church. So far, three examples where we see plurality of elders and not a single elder of the church. Philippians 1. So Philippians chapter 1, verses 1 2, it says, Paul and Timotheus, the servants of Jesus Christ to all the saints in Christ, Je Christ Jesus, which are at Philippi, which is a city, right? With the bishops and deacons. Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. And hopefully, hopefully we know that the word bishops, the word elders, the word pastors are, you know, they're synonymous words, if you may. They're similar words for, for, for a same person. It might be a different, like, role, a bishop, pastor, and elder, but they are the same person. So, again, we see here that, that Paul is addressing the deacons, the saints, and everyone who's a child of God is a saint. There's no such thing as this, this foolish Roman Catholic doctrine of, of when someone passes away, we vote, we vote on them and we make them, uh, we make them a saint. No. If you're a born-again child of God, you're a saint in Christ Jesus. Every, every child of God is a saint, is a king, is a priest. Unto God. Praise God. So, we have here again, Paul addressing bishops and deacons. Is this another coincidence that, uh, this would be the fourth one now, that we see that, you know, bishops, elders, this plurality, and not, not a single mention of, of, of a pastor, of a bishop, we have plurality. That is God's will. Now, moving down forward, or well, on my page, but actually moving back in the New Testament, going back to uh, the book of Acts, chapter 11, in verse 29, 30, I want to read this, where it says, Then the disciples, every man according to his ability, determined to send relief unto the brethren which, which dwelt at, in Judea. Uh, because there was a prophecy that there would be a dearth, there would be a famine. And so what you had here is uh, the disciples. And notice how it says, every man according to his ability, because God would have us to give out of, a, uh, give, uh, give out of um, our heart. For God loveth the cheerful giver. God doesn't want us to give out of necessity. This is what the Bible teaches, what the New Testament teaches for Christians to be doing, is to, is to help each other out. And this is an example of helping each other out. Because he wanted to out of their heart. Every man according to his ability, and ability, you know, his, his means of. Determined to send relief unto the brethren which dwelt, which dwelt in Judea. Which also they did, and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So, so we see here, you know, there's, there's elders in, 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 um, in the church in Jerusalem. So, they're, they're, it's not a one man Elders is, is not a one-man uh, show, if you may. It's not a one-man uh, system in, in Jerusalem. Uh, we have here that the, there was, there was uh, elders, and there's no mention of any senior pastor anywhere in the Bible. There was no senior pastor in, in Jerusalem or in any other church. We have here uh, an equality among the pastors. So that's what, what, what is found in the book of Acts. And, you know, and again, I just want to show you other examples of the word elders used uh, in the Bible, and I will just skip down to Acts 15, verses 1 to 6, and then 22, 23, where it says, And a certain man which came down from Judea taught the brethren and said, Except ye be circumcised after the manner of Moses, you cannot be saved. So there are people there that are trying to teach uh, salvation by circumcision, which is, you know, which is another gospel. The Bible says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works lest any man should boast. To teach circumcision would be teaching 
uh, well, a work and something that's actually done away with. Circumcision is done away with. It's not something that is for uh, Jews for today or for uh, for Christians. So the, the, they had these people trying to um, teach you got to be circumcised to be saved. And that's just total heresy for going forward. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, so they had a big argument, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem unto the apostles and elders about this question. So again, elders. Multiple elders are in this church in the, or in the church of Jerusalem. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed from Phoenix, uh, Phoenix, 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 and Samaria, declaring the conver conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. And when they come to Jerusalem, they were received of the church and of the apostles and elders, and declared all things that God had done with them. But there arose up certain of the sect of the Pharisees, which believed, saying that it was needful to circumcise them, and to command them to keep the law of Moses. And the apostles and elders came together to consider this matter. I'm just going to skip down to verse 22, 23. Then it pleased it the apostles and elders with the whole church to send chosen men of their own company to Antioch with Paul and Barnabas, Barnabas namely Judas, surnamed or, or called or otherwise named Barsabbas Bar, Bar and Silas, chief men among the brethren. The word surname does not mean last name. There's no such thing as, as a, there's no concept of a, of a family name or last name in the Bible. You always see just first names, God-given names. Surname has nothing to do with what we think surnames generally mean today or has a general meaning today of family names or last names. That's, that's not a bi biblical concept, but that's another study. And they wrote letters by them after this manner. The apostles and elders and brethren send greeting unto the brethren, which are the Gentiles in Antioch and Syria and Cilicia. You know what? I just want to show you these verses because, again, like God is, he seems to be over, overly emphasizing the elders, elders, elders. He wants, I think he's, he wants to get it across in our head that elders is his design for New Testament churches. This is what Jesus Christ would have. And then Acts 16.4, And as they went through the cities, they delivered them decrees for the keep that were ordained of the apostles and elders which were at Jerusalem. So we have that. And now, I want to show you verses from, or scriptures from the book of Acts, chapter 20, verse 17, 18, and then down 28 to 36. It says, And from Miletus he sent to Ephesus, another city, and who did he call? The senior pastor of the church? Did he call the uh, pa the elder of the church? No. Paul, the apostle Paul, called and called the elders of the church. So again, from Miletus, he sent to Ephesus and called the elders of the church. And when they were come to him. So you have the multi multiplicity of elders. You have these, you know, more than one elder, obviously. And when they were come to him, he said unto them, so plural language, them is plural. Ye know from the first day that I came into Asia, after what manner I had been with you at all seasons. Skipping down to verse 28 and down to 36. Take heed, therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock, the flock being the church, the congregation, right? Over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers. So the, these elders are the overseers of the church. And not, not to rule them over as lords, which we have happening today in churches. Many churches today that have a one-man system of, of a, of a one-man pastor, we have them ruling over the flock. They're like the, uh, the king of the church. What they say goes, no matter if it goes against the word of God. So, take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over which the Holy Ghost had made you overseers to feed the church of God. So, we have uh, Paul admonishing, reminding that the elders, the overseers, are to feed the church of God. To feed them the, the sincere milk of the word. To feed them every word of God. To feed them doctrine. To feed them teachings from the Bible, to help them to grow, help them to obey the commandments of God, help them to carry out the Great Commission, help them to become soul winners and such. To feed the church of God which he hath purchased with his own blood. Beautiful beautiful portion of scripture shows that the church of God, 
which he had purchased with his own blood, was none other than Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is God who, who purchased the blood. Who purchased the church with his own blood. For I know this, that after my departing shall grievous wolves enter in among you. So in among the uh, elders here. Not sparing the flock. So we have people, grievous wolves entering among the church. And they're not going to spare the flock. And what happens? Also of your own, also of your own selves. So here we have Paul saying that uh, after uh, that uh, there will come a point in time where that one of these elders, actually more than one of these elders, also your own self shall men arise, plural. You'll have, you'll have men arising amongst these elders, and what will they do? Speaking perverse things, twisted things, uh, things that are not right, wicked things, if you may. Speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. That's scary, and we're living in times such as these. It seems like where we have, you know, we have we have Christians that, that will flock together and, and follow a man, follow a pastor. I think about this right now too. Like you, you, we have people following a pastor who's not following God. And he they're speaking perverse things. They're speaking things that are not according to the word of God. They're speaking wicked things. Therefore, watch and remember that by the space of three years I cease not to warn everyone night and day with tears. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and the word of his grace, which is able to build you up. And to give you inheritance amongst all them which are sanctified, I have coveted no man's silver, <coughs> excuse me, or gold or apparel. Yea, ye yourselves know. So again, he's still speaking to these elders of the church of Ephesus. Yea, ye yourselves know that these hands have ministered unto my necessities and to them that were with me. I have shewed you all things, as how that so laboring ye, ye ought to support the weak. So he's, he's, he's reminding the elders in the church of Ephesus that ye, they are to be laboring with their hands to support the weak. And to remember the words of the Lord Jesus, how he said, it is more blessed to give, it is more blessed to give than to receive. And when he had that spoke, he kneeled down and prayed with them all. Yet we have here in this day and age, where we have... We have this pastor who gets up and says, you know what, it is right, it is biblical for you to pay me to teach you the Word of God. It is right for me to, to tell you that uh, I, 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 I deserve, as a compensation for preaching the Word of God, I deserve for you to pay me financially, to support me, to pay me. And what did he teach? Tithes and offerings. All this is unscriptural. There is no such thing as New Testament Christians tithing, first of all. And what I just showed you was Paul uh, reminding these elders in the church of, of Ephesus that they are to labor to support the weak, to support the needy. Just like Paul, who was not a pastor, but was a traveling missionary apostle. Just like Paul, he would labor with his hands. He did not covet anyone's silver. He did not cover anyone's gold or apparel. Yet we have pastors that seem to believe that they are entitled to receiving monetary um, and, and other such um, compensation for preaching the Word of God. That is totally against the Word of God. I want to show you 1 Timothy 5, 17, 18, because a lot of people like to go to these two scriptures to show you, no, no, Bill, Vasilis, you're wrong, buddy. Because the Bible clearly teaches that uh, thou shalt not muzzle the ox, the chariot of the corn, and the labor is worthy of his reward. Okay, let's look into this. Briefly, let the elders... Uh, notice that again? Did I just... Yeah. Did it say let the elder? No. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. For the scripture saith, Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn, and the labor is worthy of his word. People will say, you know, look here, it says the labor is worthy of his word. Thou shalt not muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. Yes, I agree with you. The labor is worthy of his reward. And you shouldn't muzzle the ox that treadeth out the corn. But what is the reward of an elder? And mind you, 
the reward of the elder is already given within verses 17 18 and it's conditional let the elders that rule well a conditional statement that rule well be counted worthy of double honor especially they who labor in word and doctrine so the reward for a uh, laborer uh, in the word of and doctrine the, the reward for these elders being addressed to you or elders in general is that they are to 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 be uh to receive double honor to be respected to be esteemed not to receive money that is not what the bible teaches i did a whole study on that on the topic that uh uh pastors that get that are paid to preach are hirelings so i don't want to really go into that too much but you have what i just showed you from these verses right here you cannot use first timothy 5 17 18 to teach me that oh bill well yo 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 uh vasilis you can't teach that uh uh, uh, elders are, 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 shouldn't receive pay. Well, yeah, they shouldn't receive pay. They are they are to be given if the they rule well, they labor, they labor and were in doctrine to receive double honor. We see from Acts what I just what I read just previously, Acts twenty. We see that uh, we see that Paul was telling them to uh, how that so laboring ye ought to support the weak. So we have them work. The pastors are supposed to be working a uh, secular job, support your families. And to support those in need. Further proof that 1 Timothy 5, 17, 18 is talking about um, a laborer, the, these, these elders that, that uh, labor in word and doctrine that they should receive uh, double honor is right here in 1 Thessalonians 5, 12, 13. And we, we, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labor among you and are over you. These are, these are the overseers that were talked about earlier. The, the, the elders and pastors and we beseech you brethren to know them which labor among you and are over you in the lord and admonish you and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourself here again thessaloni thessaloni uh, the church in thessalonica uh you had um you had those that were laboring in the word that were to to receive uh esteem to, to to receive um respect to be honored and to esteem them very highly in love for the work's sake again that sounds like double honor to me this is what a, this is the reward of a pastor that labors hard in the word it's not monetary i want to remind um those listening to this study of what colossians says in in, in one eighteen. And he is the head of the body, the church, who is the beginning, the first, the firstborn from the dead, and in all things he might have their preeminence. Now, and, and this is referring to Jesus Christ, and Jesus Christ himself, and Jesus Christ only is the head of the body, and the body and the church being one and the same thing. Jesus Christ is the head. There's no such thing as a senior pastor. There's no such thing as as as, as anyone being elevated to position where it seems like they're receiving the preeminence. But that is what we have today in a lot of churches where when you, when you, when you even were to ask someone, you know, who's the head of this church, and, and they will say probably pastor so-and-so is the head of this church. No, no, no. Jesus Christ is the head of the body. He's the head of the church, and he is to have preeminence. But what do we have today? We have a lot of pastors that take the preeminence in the church. They take first place in the church, and that is not what the Bible teaches. And we have an example of someone in the, in the Bible, though in this church most likely there was a plurality, there was multiplicity of elders, but you had someone who wanted to take first place. We had someone that wanted to stand out and be the head, the, be the head honcho, if you may. And it's in Third John, uh, chapter one, verse nine and ten, which says, "And I I wrote it unto the church, but Diotrephes, who loveth to have the preeminence among them, among them, receiveth us not. Wherefore, if I come, I remember his deeds which he doeth." Pratting against us with malicious words, and not content therewith, neither doth he himself receive the brethren, and forbiddeth them that would, and casteth them out of the church. Now I don't think uh, this what we have, see happen here in the old in, in the in the New Testament with the atrophies, You know this is this seems to be a mentality of many uh, one show pastors, many of these senior pastors where they want to have the preeminence. They want to have first place. 
they want to rule over as, as some kind of lord. Jesus Christ is have the preeminence. And we're not to have a single pastor. We're not to have uh, someone like a Diotrephes who wants to have the preeminence among them, who wants to, uh, to be the lord over people, that wants to rule the game. Because that's when you have a, when you have a, a one-man pastor system. You have you have the church is pretty much controlled by the pastor, and and what he says goes, and you have this like, you have this split. You have this um, clergy laity thing. You have this like you know two classes of people within the church, and that's not so. We are all uh, sisters and brothers unto the Lord. We are all priests and kings unto the Lord. We are all equal to have this this two tier system. You know, you have a one, you have a, you have a one pastor system. It is so easy to control a church that way, because you only have to control one man. You only have to influence one man. The devil only has to go to one, to that, to that quote unquote senior pastor, to that pastor of this church, and influence him. You can influence churches negatively very easily when you have a one pastor system. But if you have a multiplicity of elders. Who are each responsible for, for teaching and, and, and feeding the flock of God? It's going to be a lot harder for for uh, false doctrine to creep through, especially if these men are, are these men are, are are laboring in the Word. They're studying the Bibles for themselves. They're praying on things. They're, they're, if if and they're comparing things and they're talking amongst each with each other, speaking the truth in love. It's going to be a lot harder to have churches, New Testament churches, patterned after. Jesus Christ's uh, model for churches to be teaching uh, heresies. But when you have a one-man system, that's what happens. And the Bible talks about the strength, the wisdom of having a multitude of counselors. And I want to briefly touch upon that. Where it says here in, in Proverbs 11:14, uh, Where no counsel is, the people fall. But in the multitude of counselors, there is safety. Proverbs 15:22, Without counsel, purposes are disappointed but in the multitude of counselors, they are established. Proverbs 24, 6. For by wise counsel thou shalt make thy war. And in the multitude, multitude of counselors, there is safety. There is wisdom in having multiplicity of counselors. And that's, I think, part of the reason why Jesus Christ would have uh, multiple elders uh, in a church to be, to be teaching his church. Because there is safety in that. Because it, 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 Jesus Christ knows that if you allow one man to get up pretty much week in, week out and preach, that what he speaks is what a lot of people are going to receive. And we know, we just plainly know that a lot of us don't go into our Bibles and study things else. And I'm, I'm, I'm preaching to myself too. I've heard a lot of sermons and I, 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 I haven't always gone and, and tested things out. So, you know, what, what a pastor is going to get up and preach, a lot of people are going to receive it, and they're going to, they're going to, they're going to receive like it's gospel truth. They're not going to go into, the, into, into study of the Bible. So if you, if you get one man that's uh, wrong in his doctrine, you're going, to, you're going to influence the whole church. But if you have a multiple, multiple elders, you're going to have less likely, uh, you know, different elders getting up. And I think even the, the book of Corinthians talks about... Um, you know, uh, even even within a within um, a church meeting, having two or three to get up and speak, right? And, and so that's another thing too, where you have, you know, what do we have in these one man pastor churches? You have one guy, one pastor gets up pretty much week in week out, and he's the one who's doing all the teaching. Very rarely have anyone else get up. But even the Bible in the Book of Corinthians talks about you know uh, multiple people t uh, t uh, teaching. And let the others judge amongst them, among right. What's what's being taught? So uh, that's something I have for you too. And I, I don't want to make this long. I think it's getting really uh, long enough. But uh, you know what? We need to get back to Jesus' model for for elders and pastors in every church, and not a one man pastor show. You know, just look at the fruit of one man churches. You know, think of all the heresies. Think of all the false doctrine. Think of. Oh, the fleecing on the flock. And, and any pastor tells you that they, they, they should receive pay for preaching is, is a hireling. Uh, they might, they might uh, be misled about that doctrine or they might be purposely, purposely lying to you. Regardless, uh, a pastor is not to be uh, preaching for pay. 
freely have received, freely give. You know, um, buy the truth and sell it not. And I've done a study on that. And any pastor that gets up and preaches tithing, uh, you know what? Let's face it. He's 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 got a financial interest in getting up and teaching tithing, because it is his retirement that's depending on it. It's his his paycheck uh, that's depending on on you supporting him by giving tithes and offerings, and it's the building and it's the other programs and all these things are not of God. Meet in church. Churches are meet in homes. Churches are not to be meeting in buildings. What's the fruit of, 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 of Christians meeting in buildings these days? Look at all these mega churches. Look at all these, these buildings and, and billions and billions of dollars being wasted in, in, in death pledges and mortgages. Why? Because it's not based on the Bible. If we got to get back into, into in meeting in, in homes. We gotta get back into doing what the Bible says. We gotta get away from these traditions, man. We gotta get away from looking like the world. Because churches, I don't care if it's an independent fundamental Baptist church, because uh, those are the churches for the most part that are not af- patterned after the Bible. Those seem to be the only churches that are actually congregations that are filled with, uh, not filled, but uh, that have born again believers. Because, you know, you look at Presbyterians, you look at Lutherans, you look at Pentecostals, and this, that, and the other, these denominations. They're all preaching on their gospel, but independent from the Baptist churches, you have, you have, they're patterned after the world in so many doctrines. They look like the world because they're not patterned after God. So if we get back to being patterned after God, we're not going to be associated with the world. And we should not be associated with the world. And, and Bible colleges, churches having names, churches being corporations, churches having buildings, churches having ushers, churches having a one-man pastor show, churches teething, tithing, churches um, that have choirs and and, 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 and solos performed by pastors and, and, and duets with the pastor's wives. And all these things just remind me of the world and none of it reminds me of the Bible. So that's what I have for you. Test me out. I'm not perfect. Only God is perfect. Only His Word is perfect. Test His Word out. See if what I'm saying lines up with the Word of God. And seek God's will in this area of your life. God bless you. Unless you're a reprobate. Vasily Spill, signing off. Bye.